I never look at BGS uh, population reports because a lot of those nine fives have been cracked. Yeah, they have. attempted for PSA. True. So those are never accurate. Mm -hmm. But you know, if my theory is correct, if you know what you're doing in terms of grading, if you see cars that are PSA nine or BGS nine that was graded within the last year and a half, it might be a good play to risk. Because oh, Jay, you have that eye though. You know, if I see a raw car, I'm going to stand at the table, and I'm going to screw. I'm just going to look at everything that's on that car mm -hmm. to determine if I want to buy the car or not. Yep. Um, I would suggest that's. I mean, I don't think that's. Uh, how would I say it? Uh, poor business technique or anything. I mean, you're about to make a purchase. You're about to make an investment. Mm -hmm. You're about to buy something that you want to flip. Whatever it may be. I would suggest taking the time because there's there's some raw cars that I've purchased, but I took the time to thoroughly look at that car, ask the person to take it out of the top loader or whatever it may be in so that you can see the surface of that car once you yep. get beyond edges and corners and things like that. Yeah, you should because, you know, not everybody knows how to handle a raw cart. That's number sure. one. And I'm pretty sure if it's a very popular cart, it's probably been cracked and submitted so, so many times too. There's a reason, you know, I have a, I run a, uh, Jordan group in Facebook, and every so often I will see somebody is this Jordan rookie real? Is this Jordan auto real? And number one, you can't tell whether a card is real or not based on the picture. No, you cannot. Number two, a Jordan rookie is a 30 year old card. What are the chances it would grade well? You know, it's raw for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, when I walk into a show. I went to the Westminster show. Mm -hmm. I and mean, I walk up to a vendor and he had a Steph Curry Tops uh, paper card. I think he was selling it for $9.99 at the time. First question I asked him, why isn't this card graded? Mm -hmm. And he looks at me and says, look at the dimple that's by his face. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, and I looked at that and then we had a conversation on why it's not graded. But I would also suggest that for people. I mean, uh, there's not, not there's nothing wrong if you ask. Yeah, just ask the question. Mm -hmm. That's probably a story there, something there. But you know, it doesn't go for every single thing. I had this Steph Curry um, contenders auto blue and blue out of twenty. I bought it to Fairfield, hoping to sell it. Uh, that was the time when we had Fairfield. That was the time that the um, Steph was really mm -hmm. balling. Yeah. So there was only one comp for like thirteen and some change, but that was during the off season. I was asking 2200 for mine. It's out of 20. It's blue and blue. So I thought it was a fair price. Mm -hmm. Most of his uh, you know, higher numbered autos were selling for at least 1500 on card. So people offered me close to what they saw in cost, 1500 stuff like that. Nobody even came close to 2000 So I got a little frustrated. So I go, what the hell? I'll send it to PSA. It came back at 1010. It's not... It's not twenty two hundred no more. <laughs> no, it's not. You know, so and I didn't think it would jam, but I got lucky. You know, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna say this. It's in my eyes, it's not a gem. But grading is subjective, and the grader thought it was a gem. Mid, I'll take it. I'll take it and run. That's a good point because there are a lot of situations where, yeah, you do have a, a very nice car. The kind of life cycle of the car hasn't been graded yet. Mm -hmm. No one hasn't taken that step yet. But if you feel like a lot of times uh, with cars, too, uh, I, I always recommend to people don't feel like you have to do what you see someone else doing. If you have an indication inside that you think you've done your due diligence, you looked at a car, you looked at whatever research you can look at, and you think that car is eligible to be graded, think for yourself. And that's always how I, you know, even before the boom, that's always how I made my money. I usually pay close to comps if the card is really clean and I take my, my gamble on the grading. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to buy a card 200 and sell to the table for 300. I try to avoid that because word goes around how much you got the card for. That's right. And in this hobby, it's all about reputation. That's right. You know, so I'd rather do the work, you know. Um, an example for a PC card, you know, those um, scoring kings that I've graded in the past, right? Yes. So I started with the PSA 7. That was my first graded scoring king. So I really wanted the gem. So I tried BGS, I tried PSA, kept on sending, I kept on buying on eBay, looking at the card, trying to be, get the best grade. 
So let's say I bought the scoring kings at that time for a hundred bucks. I spent, let's say at that time, 15 bucks to grade. So I'm in at 115. If it doesn't get the grade I want, I just sell it for my cost, mm -hmm. you know, and just use that money again to buy the next copy and the next copy and the next copy, you know, so until, until it got the grade that I wanted, you know, so. That's a level of patience there though. Mm -hmm. That's a level of putting in the work looking at something, reanalyzing what you did before, coming up with a new strategy. There's a lot of steps there. On, on my table, most of the graded cards you see, FD, is either I graded myself or I got it graded from a trade. I will never buy a graded card simply because I don't want to pay double what the card is worth raw. Very and true. if I can, you know, Cash is always king. If you have five thousand dollars to spend, you spend it on the thing that makes most sense. You know, if this card is, you know, it's not the best Steph Curry auto card there, but it's clean, I'll take that gamble. I'll buy the card, even close to comps, grade it, and hopefully I get a nine or a ten. Then that's where I make my money. Jay, I'm learning right now. You know, <laughs> I, I usually go into a show. I'll tell you about me. I usually go into a show. I try to find the best deal that is graded. Mm -hmm. Right, but I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna challenge myself. I, I listen a lot to you. I respect you a lot. I'm gonna challenge myself to go in and look at opportunities for myself from what what is in front of me. Yep, and then go from there. Now I've done that before. Like I bought raw cards of maybe a young rookie that just came out, but I've never really looked at. Let's say I walk up and see a Steph card or a Jordan card or a LeBron card, and it's not graded. I really haven't taken the time to say, let me analyze this card right now and see where where is this card at as far as a potential for me to do something else with it. So I'll give you a tip. Especially if it's a newer card, the odds of it going to a grader, a grading company, is lower than an older card that's probably been attempted so many times. Mm -hmm. And if, especially if the, the product just got released, you know it hasn't been sent in anywhere. That's right. You know, there are people who don't want to go to, to the trouble of waiting for for their submissions to come back. Some of them, they, they're so addicted to ripping wax that they just want to unload and buy the next box. Mm -hmm. So that's where you really want to go to the dollar boxes, the $5 boxes and stuff like that. Because a lot of people just, they just want to move product fast. And since 2018, anything that came after 2018, 2019, when... PSA shut down. A lot of people just put their cards on the side, thinking it's going to reopen soon, and it just got stuck there. Mm -hmm. Now prices are dropping, so they want to unload. So there are raw copies out there right now that are worth buying to grade. Great. And, that's, that's a that's a great bit of information right there. You know, and you know, I would go to a table to a dealer, and I have this loop the jewelry loop that I use, I ask permission, hey, can I look at the card? Can I use my loop to look at the card? And they're usually okay with it, you know? Or sometimes they'll beat you to the punch. Oh, it's not going to be great. Well, there's there's a dimple, in, uh, you know, by, by the mm -hmm. face or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it saves you the time too. But again, it, like buying anything, not only cards, when you buy a car, you, you walk around the car to see there's no scratches or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. You have the right to do that, you know? But what I don't like is, when somebody comes home to my table, oh, it has this thing, it has that thing, it has that thing. You sell it for me half the price now. That I don't like. Yeah. You know, because there's a reason why it's raw. You know, especially if it's an older card. And I would I would usually tell people, you know what, this, I, I don't care if even looking at the condition because they're not the type of cards I, I want to grade. So if you want to take a risk at it, I can guarantee you this, this would never submit it. You know, this was sold to me by somebody who rips boxes and he never submitted it. I can only imagine some of the stories, some of the, the conversations you've gotten into at your table or some of the uh, things people have said. Well, the one thing that always stuck to my head is somebody comes up to me. I forgot what the card is, but it was a card that was trending high, trending up. And he goes, I want to sell this card. How much is a card? 500 bucks. Okay. And what's the comp? 300 bucks. So why are you selling me a card for 500 that's comping for 300? Oh, it's going up. It's going to go it's going to double up next week. Then <laughs> that's when I say, "Okay. 
if it doubled up next week, come back to me. <laughs> yeah, let, let the market speak first. You know, interesting. You know, so, it's people, people do that, you know, and I don't need to double up on every single card, you know, and I don't buy at 50%, but you know, if I buy at 50%, I can't, I can't buy for double the, the price of card, you know? True. And usually market standard is what? 70% when you're a dealer. Yes. Pretty standard. You know? Unless it's a liquid card and people will go up to 80, 85, sometimes even 90%, mm -hmm. you know? That's why I'd rather buy a raw card that I think I can grade. That way, it, I can I can give a strong offer and take my risk on the grade. Because if it it's a ten, it doubles up easily. You know? at, it, it at least doubles. Mm -hmm. Could be more than that. 